also a, a WS2 PI manager and the way you can integrate it with the Elk stack. I hope, really, you know a PI manager and Elk. Otherwise, it will be quite hard to follow up. We will cover eight main steps. First part is dedicated to WAPI manager components, only components. I won't re explain what API manager is. Once you understood how it works, I will explain how DAS uh, integrates with API manager in order to provide statistics. The question then is what if I want to use a different tool than DAS to gather my statistics? The answer is WS2 API Manager's flexibility. I will, I will illustrate this flexibility by first describing very high level Elk stack, and then explaining how API Manager and Elk work together. We will even dig a little further and explain how you can push your own business data to Elk from API Manager. These two steps um, should cover the main part of the session. But I will try to give clues to frequently asked questions before you ask questions. And it will be time for a conclusion. So, as I said, I won't explain what API management or WSO2 API, API manager is. You already know this. And we only have 20 minutes. If you need extra explanation, just follow the link. The blue one, the one you don't see. I will focalize on the four components, only the four components of WS2 API Manager and the way they work together. You need this picture to understand how you can connect statistical tools to these components. Each of these components, maybe you already know it, can be installed in a separated server. But you can group them all together, and that's the de mm, default configuration. The first one is the publisher. Publisher is a web application, front-end application, where you create your APIs and where you publish them to the second component, which is the store. The store is also a front application. It's a portal where APIs are exposed. Developers can register and subscribe to the APIs, test them, and even give feedbacks. Third component is a gateway. It's the runtime, the guy who works. Uh, it's based on the ESB part of uh, WSO2. Uh, and from this component, runtime statistics will be collected. The last component is a key manager in charge of security, takes care of authorization for the front end, and token management. Everything is based on OS2. So let's see how these components work together. Is it clear? The publisher, the guy, not the publisher API, creates and publishes an API both toward the store and the gateway. Okay? In order to subscribe, we need a client. And she needs to get the credentials from the key manager. Okay, three and four. Once she gets the token, the client can invoke the API securely. To invoke the API, she calls the gateway, the ESB part, remember. The gateway triggers a corresponding API proxy. Proxy is okay for everybody? ESB terms. The in sequence, the sequence where requests go through. Which call? the key manager 
to validate the given token. Publish the request statistics and eventually call the backend services, at least. The web service runs and sends a response back. On the way back, the out sequence in charge of re um, response or the fourth sequence, if there is a problem, uh, re um, is then triggered. Response statistics are published, so request statistics on the way in, response on the way out, and the response is sent back to the client. That's all. Is it clear? Perfect. Let's see how DAS integrates with this model. The story starts when the client invokes the API. The in sequence of the API, the API proxy is invoked. The sequence sends statistics toward DAS and calls the backend. At the same time, almost the same time, the inputs even taken in charge by a batch analytics server inside DAS and summarized inside DAS tables, this part on the very left. External API manager tables can be updated as well. API publisher and store collect the statistics and display them in their own dashboards. So you don't use DAS dashboards, but API manager, store, and publisher dashboards to get the statistics. The output event is also summarized, and external API manager are updated on the way back. In parallel, of course, the client receives the response. So, what about this component? We'll see how we can replace it by another one. If you don't want, you cannot use this. Ah, yes, of course, client and publisher get the statistics. So, we will focalize on this part only, and we'll reorganize it a little. Yes. So we'll see how it works from the gateway point of view. Remember, the gateway is the ESB part. First, we will organize everything, so it's much clearer. API gateway is an ESB. Each API is composed of an in sequence, where requests go through, and out sequence or foot sequence, where they go through when you, got, when you get the response. A request goes this way, and the response or a foot that way. The publisher part of the global mediation in charge of publishing statistics consists of several Java classes. The handlers. The handlers have access to the mediation flow, message context in ESB dialog. Data publisher itself and DTOs. Data publisher sends the data to DAS, and the DTOs are just structure when your request, your response, and your thought informations are stored. So when message goes through the in sequence or out sequence, the handler invokes the publish event from your publisher and data is sent to DAS. Is this part clear? Quite easy, right? The problem is, maybe it's not a problem, DAS is a Great, great software. 
Maybe you saw some demonstration about this during these last two or three days. But what if you already have a BAME or an analytic solution or the same solution already in place? Operatives don't like too much tools. And your user don't like either. Maybe you just need some plain statistics. Maybe you don't need the whole machinery. So is that essential if you want to collect your single statistics within API Manager? The answer is no. No. You don't need to install DACE with API Manager to gather statistics. API Manager is flexible enough to allow you to use your preferred stack so you can start with another solution without any problem, just by configuration and, of course, some light developments. How does it work? We just, you just have to write your own implementation of the publisher class, remember? So you can use, there is space for rent, and you can use your own implementation of this class, just this one. For example, your API management usage statistics. And you connect as anything you want. That's it. Just one class to create some configuration, and you can put anything you want instead of this. I will give you an example with Elk. Everybody knows Elk? Great. Elk is a pipeline of three open source projects. The E is Elastic, the L is Logstash, and the K is Kibana. It takes that, uh, if you look for Elk using Google, specify Elastic Elk. Otherwise, you will get a lot of things like this. Takes data from any source, any format, more than 50 different input plugins. Store and indexes using uh, Elasticsearch. And visualize it in real time using Kibana. Big picture gives something like this. You have your Logstash component, which, depending on the input plugins, pull data from different sources. I said it more than uh, 50. Whatever you want, file, JDBC, Kafka, pipes. Data are transformed and formatted and sent to various destinations configure as output plugins. And you have even more output plugins, as you can see. For example, Nejos. Nejos is a good connector. Kafka, MongoDB, if you want. In the case of Elk, of course, the output plugin which we are interested in is Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch will store your data, the collected data, from the inputs and index it. It is job. From there, Kibana can request, connect to Elasticsearch and make requests and create beautiful dashboards. And voila. So on this screen, I just have to put my log publisher information here. Which will publish log files, that's all. And the Elka stack at the place for rent location. Okay, so the global architecture is exactly the same 
I just had to modify or to create a new class, new class which implements a given interface. The interface is given by WSO2. You just modify one configuration file, and that's it. Of course, you have some work at the ELK level, Logstash, primary, in order to identify which part of your, your log files you want to store in the index, but it's no more complicated than this. Okay, so I will show you, I will try with this to show you a demonstration what it gives in real life. In order to do this, I have to quit four points, then put my computer on mirror mode, Pray a little. Wow. And uh, maybe if I find it, launch this. This is the Kibana results of a real, uh, real world API, API calls. I created six different APIs from the Weather underground system, maybe you know it, it's well known, and uh, of course, pet shop. And I launch it, can do it again, and gather this kind of statistics. Of course, you can create anything you want, can be a pie chart, a donut, just tabular data, histogram, <coughs> this kind of diagram for the response time, and even a geo diagram like this one, where you have the origin of, your co of the calls. Are we launch everything? Ah, I don't have any time. I mean, it's always zero. So if I'm late, you tell me. So from here, you just have to launch API Manager, you launch Elasticsearch, you launch Logstash, and Kibana. So my static dashboard should come to life. We'll see. Yes, it's living now. From here, you can select whatever you want, and it will zoom on the parts you, you just select. Yes, I know, you started. Sorry, but on my screen, it's very, very small. You can, for example, just uh, select the application which corresponds to uh, WSO2 conference. Just have to click here. And all the data are synchronized. And just the application, the given application from the API manager point of view is shown. So if you have a problem on a given application or a given user or a given API, you can uh, easily select and focalize on the problematic part. Uh, Everywhere, you can have a tabular vision of your data. Even if you choose a pie chart, you can always say, OK, pie chart is nice, but I would like to see the real data. You can. Uh, what else? Uh, of course, you can play with time window, and everything is synchronized. Uh, this kind of component is funny also. I simulated uh, calling from different locations. Didn't get there. 
And I think it's almost all. So now if I launch some new data, we feel OK. So here, I call a launch in a randomly way, uh, several call uh, to API manager. And of course, this call will populate the dashboard just so should begin to, to move. Yes. Just a little. We'll try to focalize. Just on the last part. So you see, the new data are coming. And as I as just selected a little part in the time, we we'll just have a few information compared to the information we had uh, previously. Is it okay for this? So, of course, you can create whatever dashboard and whatever visualization you want. Just some click, and it's okay. Let's see something a little more challenging now. Okay, these are the information I get straight from API Manager, but these are this DAS formatted information. I just have what is given to DAS to create it uh, on dashboards. But what if I want to put my own business information in this kind of dashboard? Is it possible? Response is, again, yes. But it will ask a little more job in order to do the job. I will show you if I can relaunch PowerPoint. So we saw it. It's very, this part was quite easy to do. So let's try with something more challenging. Say it, you want to push your beloved business data to the very same dashboards. How can you do it? Let's restart from this diagram. Last time, we just modified the very upper part in order to publish our statistics. The problem is that the DTO, the data uh, models, are uh, are fixed. So if you want to push extra information, you have to extend these DTOs. If you extend this DTO, of course, this means you have to rewrite your handlers because the signature is part of the, the handlers. Of course, it will also impact your mediation because you have to take the information from somewhere in your payload in the, during the request or during the response. You want to take your data from the flow. And of course, you have to update your publisher in order to take care of the new published data. The good news is you can do this only by Configuration. Of course, you have to create the classes. But remember, WSO2 is open source. So just have to see how it, it is written. And you write your own ones. It's easy to do, very. In less than one day, you can write this kind of thing. If you have a lunch. OK. From the ESV point of view, it's also just configuration, XML files or mediation to modify. You can choose. You can say, OK, I want to, I want to get a globally approach, global approach. And in this case, it's just configuration and you have nothing to do. Or I want to put specific business information within specific APIs. In this case, 
you have to modify each API independently. And in this case, if you republish the API, of course, you lose everything. So keep your modification somewhere. Modification is just add some property and add uh, one or two handlers, that's all. Okay? But you have to keep them somewhere. Okay, so time for the second demonstration. But maybe, maybe I will uh, go on the slideshow before going back for the problem we just encountered, okay? So some frequently asked question. What if I want to populate WSO2 API statistics table anyway. Remember, thus uh, puts data into the API statistics table in one of the model. You can do it because what I just show you uh, is compatible with the DES approach. You can combine both solutions, it will work. You just have to put the different handlers side by side, and you will get the information from DAS and from ELK, or your beloved solution. If you want, don't, absolutely don't want to use DAS, you can do it yourself. I mean, inside Logstash, for example, you have a JDBC output connector. You have all the data, JDBC connector, you just have to write, inside the table, they are documented. What if you don't want to use the ALKS stack? It's not a problem. If you want to use uh, Splunk, do the same thing. The only thing you will have to modify is the publisher to adapt to Splunk, or Greylog, or whatever you want, or Recall BAM. What are ah, yes? This runs on 2.0 version. What about the 1.x version? It works the same way, exactly. All the versions work with uh, BAM, WSO2 BAM. Newest one uh, works with WSO2 DAS, but the global principle is exactly the same. So it works, and we did it. What about if I republish the API? I already gave you the answer. It depends. If you chose a global approach, it doesn't matter. If you chose a specific approach per API, and for business component, you, there is a high probability that you choose this approach, well, you have to rewrite. So save your modification somewhere. And what about the overhead? Uh, maybe you noticed in one of the, in one of the um, dashboards, there was a response time, a top 10, a backend response time, a backend uh, top 10 response time, and the service time, the API time, and you don't even, even see the line, because it's very, very, very small, even if you publish log. If you know that the system you will call is not asynchronous, log4g, the uh, version two of log4g is asynchronous, but if you know the system you will use is not asynchronous, it's synchronous, so you will bring some overhead. So be careful, in this case, you just have to implement some uh, uh, integration platform, uh, integration pattern, sorry, uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, a wiretape, message tape, message store, and so on. Okay? You can do this with the ESB part. Ah, yes. This is my company. We have a boot outside.
So time for a conclusion. API manager is definitely a very good tool to manage your API. But in most of the case, you already have an existing ecosystem in place in terms of uh, statistics gathering. API manager has proven its capabilities to adapt in this case. I mean, you don't need, you understood it, you don't need to use the wool stack, the DAS stack, if you don't want to or you cannot do it. And maybe uh, you can start with something light like Elk and then in the near future use DAS. It's not a problem. So we can say that WS2 API Manager is an elastic solution. So 20 minutes is short and I don't even know if I have no counter, so <laughs> if you need more detail, if you want to see how it's implemented, the class, the real life, the hard part, uh, I'm on, I'm here, I'm available, so I can show you how it works into details. That's all, folks.